Good day everyone, meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody getting along? Well, we have a potential tropical cyclone number 15, and this system will likely become our next tropical storm and probably most likely our hurricane. So let's take a look at all the particulars without wasting any more time in the special edition. All right, infrared satellite showing a blossoming system here now. Take a look. Yeah, the center is over here, so most of the shower and thunderstorm activity is on the east side. It's interesting we have a feature over here over towards Puerto Rico as well. That is heading off towards the northeast, not going to amount to much. So here is Jamaica looking for potential uh, tropical storm and some outer feeder bands feeding into this. Heavy rains and the Cayman Islands up here as well. So those are the two areas we're going to be watching here in the short term. All right, here it is, potential tropical cyclone number 15. This is our storm to watch over the next 72 to 96 hours. Take a look at this system. Likely to become a tropical storm by uh, Monday here. And as we continue into Tuesday, we're taking a look here. It will likely become a hurricane as it passes just south of the Cayman Islands. Likely becoming, I think this thing has the potential to maybe become a Category 2. We'll have to see it does have its eyes on Belize here, so if you are in that area, definitely going to want to take cover. Let's take a look and start preparing here. Let's take a look at the GFS first here. Let's back this up. So we have the system. It is kind of, you know, it's getting better organized in here. Um, and then I'll take a look at the Euro momentarily here. But as we go in time here, take a look at this. This is Monday at 5 a.m. There it is. 2 p.m. Monday afternoon. It is literally going to be passing just south of Jamaica. So here we go. We have Jamaica is going to be having some effects with this. Would not be surprised if we have tropical storm type effects going on. There is going to be some heavy rains. I'll go over those rainfall amounts momentarily with you. And look at that. By about Tuesday at 2 a.m., a lot of it by this point is to the south and west of Jamaica. Here at Jamaica here. So a lot of these feeder bands by this time will be elongated out in this direction. And here is the Cayman Islands. So as this continues westward here, let's take a look and see how the GFS blows this up. Look at this. So yeah, we have a system that is likely going to be strengthening. And you can see the GFS giving this a pretty solid eye by this point so i think the gfs is indicating that this is going to become stronger than a category one hurricane it does take it a little bit north of the forecast guidance track uh just north of belize city here you can see this is by wednesday at 11 p.m so this system is really booking it towards the west here and look at it it becomes a big heavy rain producer inland here so look at that and it kind of washes out will it make it into the bay over here Bay of Campeche, we'll have to see. It might try to redevelop into something here or maintain some of its tropical characteristics. So taking a look at the Euro, we're just going to superimpose uh, the dry air uh, with the moist air here. This gives us a really good idea. And look at this, the Euro taking it just south of Jamaica. Um, this is actually by, you know, Monday morning. So this uh, Euro is just a tad on the quick quicker side here. It's moving towards the... Uh, northwest so to speak so the center does pass just like on the gfs just south of jamaica so expect tropical storm force conditions potentially there and look at this here is the cayman islands uh you will be on the northern side of the system so you could get some feeder bands moving in there as well it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves the euro of course you know not strengthening it like the gfs is but we do see the fact that it is on the euro i do think this will become a hurricane and the Euro veers it a little bit more towards the southwest here into Belize. So the GFS is just a tad north of Belize City, whereas the Euro is just a tad south of Belize City. We'll have to see how that uh, how that factors in here. Uh, there's that, uh, you can see all this dry air, so to speak, across the northern Gulf. I think that's pretty much going to stay away from this system, so this system doesn't have too much to worry about uh, as far as dry air. And then it heads inland, and it maybe on the Euro here becomes... A tropical system into the eastern Pacific. Now take a look at this interesting feature behind it here uh, on the Euro. This is uh, looks like some kind of a, let's get that out of the way, some kind of an upper level low here. Um, you can see moisture spinning around it here, so we'll have to watch this as well. This is, this is kind of interesting that this is popping up, but look at the dry air and training in behind it. So just as this system passes, 
all of this hostile conditions moving behind it. So the Caribbean pretty much being shut off of anything major tropical in nature there. Now I'll take a look at the GFS here on the humidity layer. Take a look at this. So as we go in time here, there it is passing just south of Jamaica. You see dry air is not going to be a concern for the system and GFS takes it much stronger into Belize there just a tad bit further north. Uh, but there you have it. Um, there's the same feature I showed you on the Euro as well. We'll have to watch. that. That's interesting. There's quite a bit of tropical moisture on the east side, but there is that hostile dry air filtering in right behind it. Let's see what the position of the high pressure system is. So yeah, the, essentially you do have a area of high pressure up here and that's going to be interesting because that is going to continue to steer this system more towards the west. All right, so let's take a look at rainfall totals. These are in millimeters here as most of the other nations of the world do measure in millimeters. So let's take a look. This should be convenient for parts of the Caribbean here. So let's take a look. You can see, wow, so this is the Euro model taking a lot of rain, especially the southern shores here of Jamaica. You can see uh, this is upwards of 60 to as much as 100 millimeters of rain in some of these areas. So, And look at this towards Belize. This is where you're going to be upwards of 100, 150, 200 millimeters of rainfall here. Now the Cayman Islands, you're going to be far enough north that you're going to escape most of the really heavy rain, 30 to as much as 45 millimeters of rain. So to put that in perspective, you'll probably be seeing, you know, two, three, maybe upwards of four inches of rain in the southern shores of Jamaica here. Uh, probably about a, a, a most areas will be around an inch here in the Cayman Islands, maybe locally higher. And this is where we're going to see six, eight, 10, 12 inches potentially of rainfall. Taking a look at the Western Pacific here, we had Tropical Storm. Nalge moved through uh, the Philippines here. Thankfully, it didn't become a major typhoon. It will briefly become a typhoon, uh, most likely on Tuesday as it nears the South China coastline here. But thankfully, by the time it reaches um, Hainan Island here, it's likely to become weaker into a tropical depression as it bends westward around an area of high pressure. So this is great news. We got another system out here that we got to watch for the Philippines. Tropical Depression 27. Yep, we're up to 27 now. This likely to not become much of anything. Let's actually play this into motion here and see how this evolves. You can see that's, uh, yeah, it's not battling, or it's battling very uh, hostile uh, conditions there. Uh, the seas are also stirred up from the previous storms. You can see our Potential typhoon up here, Nalge, uh, moving towards the northwest, and it will become a big rain producer uh, for South China here. So as we go towards Wednesday at 11 a.m., you can see here becoming quite a big rainfall producer around the southern part of China. Look at this. The Philippines are clearing out and looking nice. So yeah, we do have this system. What's left? of Tropical Depression 27. We'll have to watch. It might try to develop into something here. This is Thursday, uh, November 3rd here. You can see this system bending off towards the northwest here and at this point just becoming much of a heavy rain producer. And then look at this. This is Friday, November 4th. We have some heavy rain moving into the Philippines with that uh, what's left of Tropical Depression 27, but it doesn't look like much by then. Uh, we do have a system up here uh, towards Taiwan by this time. We'll see if that develops into anything. That looks like more of westerlies more than anything um, or some subtropical type of system. But for the most part, you don't really see too much. There's quite a bit of clearing on this side of the ocean. All right, so let's take a look here. Our future radar. We'll take a look and see what the weather's doing up here in North America. Look at this. So, yeah, this is Sunday, uh, Monday. This is sending on to Monday Sunday night into early Monday, you can see we do have some shower and thunderstorm activity heading on with our next system into parts of Ohio, into West Virginia and Virginia. What's this mean for the Northeast for your Monday? Well, let's continue to progress here. And it looks like we will have some scattered showers trying to work their way into the picture. If you're in the Lake Erie, Lake Ontario region, it looks like by 1 p.m. your lunch hour, you will be getting in on some showers and some embedded thunder showers knocking on your door. But most of these will be on the light side. And as we continue throughout the day, we will have some increasing clouds, maybe a few showers working into the I-81 corridor here. But for, you know what? For the most part, it will remain dry. And look at this. We got some shower and thunderstorm activity in southwestern Pennsylvania. 
Uh, this will be heading northeast, but temperatures are really going to be warm. It's not until Monday night, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., after midnight here, we start to get some heavier showers and thunderstorms. Look at this. this these are pretty strong here in part, parts of North Carolina, Virginia, and then extending up into the Susquehanna River Valley, we have some heavier showers uh, working their way into the Binghamton, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area, Poconos, Catskills. These will be moving into your area throughout the real early morning hours of Tuesday morning. You can see showers and thunderstorm action, but they'll start to weaken as they head to the northeast here. But we're definitely in a warmer, uh, rainier pattern to be had here as we head into early, into early Tuesday afternoon here. Look at this. We do have some heavier showers and thunderstorms here moving into western parts of New Jersey. So watch out for some of these big gully washers. And some viewer sent in photos here. Jim from Groton to Fishers Island, sunrise to sunset. Take a look at this. This is beautiful. Nice. Wow, nice captures here. Look at that, the water, and there is the sun. Some beautiful colors in the sky. Look at that, the sun's higher there. Look at those waves coming in and all those beautiful rocks. Nice captures here, Jim. Take a look at this as we continue throughout the day. Look at this. Looking really beautiful. Look, water's a little riled up there. But look at that. That looks beautiful. Look at those oranges. And you can see, look at there, some fall foliage here as well. Nice captures there, Jim. And take a look at this. Also from this past Thursday, John. Uh, Huddersville University over in the UK. Take a look at this. Beautiful fall foliage. Nice capture. Look at those reds and oranges there in the background. Beautiful captures there, John. And take a look at that. That one as well. You can see. Look at those reds and oranges off in the distance there. Nice captures, John. So taking a look at temperatures, look at this for Monday. This does not look like we're going into October 31st here. 60s across most of the region, even some 70s down here. This is crazy in Virginia's and parts of southern Ohio. As we head into Tuesday, how long is this going to hang around? It looks like we're pretty much in the thick of it here across much of the northeast. We're staying pretty mild here into your Wednesday as well. Not looking too bad. Look at this. Plenty of 60s. Upper 60s and most areas 69 degrees in the big cities of the northeast. Susquehanna River Valley, you can't complain. You're in the mid 60s into Thursday as well. We don't see any major pattern changes, at least through this part of this week. Take a look at that. Definitely staying like a mild week into next weekend. This is crazy to even think. Most areas are going to be into the upper 60s here. They extended outlook from hometown viewers, Upper Susquehanna River Valley from Bingham to the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre area. Take a look at this. This is crazy to even think that by the end of the week, we'll be approaching the lower 70s. Look at this. We have a chance of showers maybe later Monday into you know Tuesday here. But you know what? For the most part, look look at this. This is crazy to even think about that we'll be seeing highs in the mid to upper 60s every day. This is crazy weather that we're having. So get out there and enjoy. If you have a little bit of fall foliage left to enjoy, go enjoy it. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. You can like me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Don't forget my localized page is Susquehanna Weather on Facebook. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, share, subscribe, hit that notification button.